Hello everyone, it's me, Nikki, and today I'm here with a book review. I shall be reviewing The Lost City by Amanda Hawking. Um, this is an ARC, and I received this in a Goodreads giveaway. So thank you to Goodreads and uh, Wednesday Books that you, there you go, can't really see that, um, who I assume uh, did the giveaway. And this is set in um, the world of Tyrell, which I've never read before. So um, I was very confused when I was reading the first couple pages because it's fantasy but it's set in modern times and um, they're they're trolls and I think there are there's some tribal facts at the back there's one two three four five there's five tribes of trolls um, and I was also a little confused because the synopsis here on the back says that Ula, the main character, is offered an internship working alongside the handsome Pan Soriano. Um, and she jumps at the chance so she can find out about her parents. She wants to focus all of her, she wants to focus on her job and her search. Um, but then Ula and Pan find themselves wrapped up uh, helping Eliana, who's an am amnesiatic girl, I don't know if I've ever seen amnesiatic before, with abilities, uh, and she's running from something, and to figure out who she is, they must leave the city. Now, um, Ula does go to um, the Mim Mimarin, which is the prestigious school but she's not really working alongside Pan, and her and Pan do not leave the city to help Eliana until later. So I thought this would be like a fantasy adventure where Ula, I have, I'm assuming that's Ula, I'm not sure, um, she looks prettier than how Ula is described in the book, because Ula's an um, 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 something? Omti, which are like big and tall and strong and sort of like crooked faced. Um, but she's only half Omti, I suppose. Um, and then I thought, you know, they would meet this girl and then leave the city and go find the lost city, but that doesn't happen. Well, it does, just not in the, not like that. So, I got my little notebook out again. Um, so yeah, it's an arc, so obviously, um, that summary isn't what happens in the book. It's definitely an Earth, and it's sort of, like, in Canada? where it starts, and then like in Minnesota, and then the Memorin is on the west coast, I think? Um, and they're trolls, but there's sort of like, like there's two tribes that are pretty ones, and they're more like elves or fairies, and they have changelings and stuff like that. Um, and they also, it also does not mention, but because I was very confused. Ula is sort of like a nanny, nurse, family friend to this family that has a bunch of kids and she stayed there to look after the children and um, get an education. And one of them, Hannah, who is 12, uh, is being driven with Ula to go see her grandparents, and then Ula will go to the Memorin. But that doesn't happen because Hannah tags along. So she's there the whole time. She has a roommate, Dagny, 
who you find out later is asexual, just sort of said offhandedly, and Ula doesn't know what that is, which might make sense because she's from a small town. Um, and there is romance between Ula and Pan. And Ula, you get a hint that she is special because on page 93, let me find it, um, this doctor that Dagny works with says that she has sectoral heterochromia. And heterochromia is a difference in coloration of both eyes. So, you know, one red, one red, one blue, one green. But sectorial heterochromia is a single iris having two different colors. So like her eye in half, one side is blue, one side is green. Um, and so that is sort of like your first hint that maybe she is something a little different um, because she's half om omsi she thinks um, um, and she does find out some information about her mother maybe but it's all blacked out and Pan who works at the, I've already forgotten the school name, I want to keep calling it Memoron because that's the, the guy, the Norse god. The Memorin, um, he works in a different part, whereas Ula is doing translation of all the records because they're trying to consolidate everything. Um, and Ula is also there because she doesn't know who her parents are, and this doctor has taken her blood, and they're doing, like, genetic testing, basically, um, because the troll population is dying. So all these trolls, which are set on, like, no technology, have to change their ways. So that's also a bit what the, of the translation is for. Um, and Pan is half human and half some other kind of troll and they're both maybe related to royalty um, and so this this city that they're in like no technology works or anything not really unless you go to certain spots and the people well I guess they're people the Ogonin sort of like sit on top of the city buildings and project a magical barrier and they're creepy looking but they're cool so I'd like to know more about them finally Eliana shows up and she is a troll sort of but like her hair constantly changes color she can blend in with the walls and she's like very fast and she connects with Hannah um, and she's weird because like they'll ask her questions and she'll answer them but like in a weird way it's just weird and it's probably because she has no memory of the past of anything except her name and that she was in the city to look for somebody but she also has no ability to retain information told to her because later on they're walking through a market and she keeps asking what like a thing is and Ula's like I've told you three times it is this thing so and then oh yeah two people show up this random guy and a woman named Sumi who just start talking to Ula like they know her and this random guy is sort of flirting with her. And to me, that's suspicious that both of these random people show up talking to Ula like they know her just when she's met Eliana. Um, and then, because Ula wants to know about her parents, 
she gets suspicious of people higher up that they're not telling her everything. And it's like, well, they can't because the Omti are very, um, what's the word? Uh, they keep to themselves. They don't give a lot of it. They don't like a lot of written information. So that's not helpful. Um, and then Eliana goes to the same doctor to get her blood drawn, but it's very different than normal. And the doctor is very interested, but he doesn't want to upset Eliana further. Um, and there's a lot of talk in the book about fit, mit, fit, fit, myths and fairy tales, like you, um, the Bifrost Bridge, they called it something else. Or, you know, trolls are from Scandinavia, Mimirin is like Mimiron, Odin, Thor, all that stuff. Um, and it seems like Eliana and maybe Ula, from what she also finds out about her mother, might actually be related to these myths. And there's even like a cult that thinks the myths are true. So Eliana might be related to that cult or running from that cult. Um, and uh, at some po point, probably near the m last third, it, the book is definitely a setup for other books because there's a lot of information being thrown at you about Eliana and about Ula and about the cult and about the myths. But none of it is resolved in the book. It's definitely like first in a series. Sometimes books don't feel that way. This one felt that way to me. Um, uh, yeah, I already talked about Dagny being ace. And, you know, and then... Um, I said this in my review. Eliana... Uh, because the Amazon summary is even different than the back. Um, Eliana is captured by people related to her somehow. And Pan and, and Ula, you know, are like, well, we got to find her because we have to and you know it might help Ula with her her family um so I thought the ending was okay because it definitely is a setup for the se a sequel which I believe is also having a giveaway on Goodreads right now um but it's interesting I mean I was very confused um, but I thought it was pure fantasy and I didn't know that there was going to be like a McDonald's reference. So, um, I would, I would read, um, is it Tyrell? Did I say Tyrell earlier? Oh, well. Um, try a little, I don't know how to say that. I would definitely read other books just to make sense of this. I, uh, I guess you could jump in here like I did. You'd just be a little bit confused because it opens with um, a prologue and you don't hear anything about trolls or anything and then you do. So uh, that was a bit jarring. Um, and the, 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 it was just weird that the city had, like, technology. It was weird. But I could get into it, I guess. Um, I guess it's, is it an urban fantasy? It might be urbanish fantasy. Um, uh, but I would, I would read the other books set in this world. I would, uh, read the sequel to this because now I have to know what happens. 
Um, I want to know about Ula's parentage, and I want to know what the hell's going on with Eliana. So yeah, I liked it. Um, I gave it... I always give it stars on Goodreads. I, I don't really like to do that, but I do. Um, but yeah, I liked it. I would read it again. It was okay. I would read it again. I, mean, I wouldn't read it again right now, because I remember everything, but... Um, I would read the sequel and I think it's Switched, Torn, and Ascend I think are the books set in this universe but yeah those are my thoughts on um, The Lost City I hope I made any sort of sense whatsoever um, I'll make sure to link uh, to my blog post uh, down below and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.